Screen Savers. I'm Kate Patello. And I'm Captain Kangaroo. Oh, Thanks for joining us. Hello. Welcome to Screen Savers. She does that before every show, but usually you don't see that. That's right. And today I'm wearing pants. I've been wearing skirts all week. No high kick. I've been like, ooh, before the show. It just doesn't work. Usually she just kind of brushes my chin a little bit. Thanks for joining us, just to keep me in line. <laughs> Coming up on today's show, we vote. We devote. We, de we vote? We evolve. We devote. Just about the entire show to helping you learn more about your computer by answering your questions live. This would be another way of saying, I've got nothing to tease you with. We're just going to answer calls. It's all about you, except for, hello. You got something? I got, I got something. nothing. I got something for the nice people today. All right. You know what I have for the nice people today? What? Wouldn't it be easier if your computer didn't have ISA or PCI? Sounds like heaven to me. Sure. Me too. Or not. Well, we'll find out if it's heaven or not a little bit later. Well, this is a dumb idea. Sounds like my Palm Pilot. Then Jim Louderback has a three-dimensional look through some new gaming goggles. On today's is this going to be Jim and another Gucci accessory? Yeah, if Jim can put oh, on a weird oh, hat, man. a weird device, he will do it. <laughs> Bless his heart. Before we introduce today's topic in the chat room, let's check out the final results of the last poll. Our question was, can the web change the vote? So far, well, check this out. 67% oh. of you say yes. It's going to affect the electoral process, at least yours. 33% of you say, uh -uh, no way, I don't care. That's pretty good, two to one. I think that's significant. Right. Today in the chat room, we've got another vote for you. Win 2000 or what? Or what? Fill us in, man. Actually, We're or me. Are you confused by Microsoft's operating system strategy? Many people are. Mm -hmm. Mainly because Microsoft decided to make the next version of Windows NT not Windows NT 5, right. which is the logical successor to Windows NT 4, mm -hmm. but instead decided to call it Windows 2000, which sounds like the logical successor to Windows 98, right? You got Windows 1998, yeah. Windows 2000. And didn't they make grumbly noises about killing the old kernel that went with the Well, and that has family? really confused people because you've heard... Now, I don't know if Microsoft really, like, an announced this, but they said that they would like to eventually belief. merge Windows 98's code base with Windows NT's code so base we thought that's to create a new operating system that's robust. Well, no, they've always said that that's not what Windows 2000 is. Okay. They've always said that Windows 2000, and this is where the confusion comes in. I don't blame you for, this is, I mean, it's like, confusing. Windows 2000 is NT. Windows 1998, well, what are they going to do? They can't do maybe Windows 2001? No. What they're going to do, they're working on it right now. They're calling it Windows Millennium. And as of today, they've announced that this will be designated, and I am not making this up, Windows Me. They stole that from ZDTV, man. Windows Me. ZDTV Me. Because -E. it's going to be Windows Millennium Edition. Get it? Yeah. Windows M E. But they want you to call it Windows Me. Oh my goodness. And this goes along with the you know, they renamed Windows C E to what did they Windows call it? Windows Power. Windows Power. Right. Well now what <laughs> how about that Windows makes no sense. You know, Windows Mobile. That That's would make cool. sense. You know, Windows handheld. They, but, they want, but the reason is Windows but powered. They want that Windows powered logo everywhere. This is a Windows powered device. Oh. This cow is Windows powered. That kind Deep of thing. Fake. And But the Windows <laughs> me. Microsoft Windows inside next to the Intel inside sticker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they already have that. You haven't seen that? Oh, yeah, they've already been doing that for a long time. Well, see? So, so I guess the question, and we've kind of explained it now, there, there are two operating system, actually three operating system families in the Windows family. There's Windows CE, which is now going to be called Windows Powered. Right. <laughs> Based on... It's hard to keep a straight face when you do this. Yes. There's Windows 98, which will be succeeded by Windows Me. Based, that's your boss about based me. Me, me, me. And then there's Windows NT4, which will be replaced with Windows 2000. And why didn't they just call it NT5 and then call Windows NT, uh, Windows Me, Windows 2000, which made more sense in the progression with all the years and the whole thing? I don't know. Hey, thank you, Macintosh OS 8, OS 8.5, OS 9, OS 10. 10. And it's not an X, it's a 10. 10. What do you think? I'm confused, man. Take the web poll at the screensaver.com. While you're there, you know, were, were you thinking about going to Windows 2000 and now you're like, oh, now I totally don't want to do that. Yeah, a lot of people, because you can't upgrade 98 to 2000. Right. So a lot of people thought, oh, I'm supposed to upgrade 98 to 2000. But you're not. You're actually supposed to go from 98 to me. You just haven't heard of me yet or seen it yet. <laughs> Me's not out until later this year, you, probably. That why... means it won't be out until 2001. Okay, so, Dad, you're probably watching the show today. Remember you were asking me about Windows 2000? Don't worry well, about I it. I like Windows well, No, I like I like Windows 2000, and I think actually it is a logical upgrade, but Microsoft doesn't. Okay, my dad would hate Windows 2000. Maybe he would, I don't know. I don't know your dad. I would like it. You can also call us 888-989-7879 or chat with us at chat.zdnet.com. Luis, give us a call. Tell us whether you'd like it. Oh, great. Or if you're in the chat room, go to the screensavers room. Okay. All right, unless, of course, you've got a net cam. You want to be on television. Does your father have a net cam? 
You know, I need to get my dad in that camp. Get him in that camp. I want to see him he on the show. He never do Does it. Does he look like you? Yes. Oh, I want to never see him. Never in a million years. Click on the next My dad's been on the show. Yeah, that's your dad. My, it's not his style. Hi, guys. Just smack me. Smack Hi, me. Hi, Mom. Oh, smack me. And, uh... <laughs> Kevin's in the back, and Roger's got a big sign in front of his face that I can't see, so I'm sorry. Uh, earn yourself a fabulous magnet to be seen on your fridge. More and more like a zoo uh, in there. There's the handsome Mr. Merritt and an as-yet-unnamed fabulous redhead be on your fridge as well. Where do we get that fridge? I don't know. I know, but I'll tell you later. And earn yourself a magnet, which I'm going to get rid of right now. Ah! Ooh, see, I didn't... You hit the piano. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Marcus, I forgot to tell you to duck. Alan joins us on the ZDTV 3 Com Net Cam Network from Buffalo, New York. Alan? Alan? You're in trouble, help boy. Us out, this man. Is... <laughs> hey, Kate Leo. Hey, how, how are you doing? doing? I'm doing good. All right, nice picture. What kind of connection are you calling us on? It's a cable modem. Looks good. What kind of camera? Uh, a little Intel uh, Net Cam. Cringe here, wow. Little... That's the one you have. You That's like right. That. Yeah. Love it. It so... is, but it's a very good picture. What can we do for you? I uh, got a question about the internet connection sharing. Yes, mm -hmm. ICS in the parlance. As a tour. That's right. I uh, I've, I've set it up, and I want I I'd heard you before, Leo, refer to, uh, or at least allude to the fact that you might be able to set up the gateway computer with just one network interface card. In theory, in yes. In theory, you're supposed to be able to do that. And so I was wondering how you went about doing that, because when you go to set up internet connection sharing, yes, it, it says, it "Where's my other Nick?" It, it asks you which, which which card you want to use to connect to the internet and which to the LAN. Right. I don't know. Remember that part, Alan, how he said, in, in theory, mm -hmm. that's supposed to work? <laughs> we tried on this very show to do ICS with one mere NIC, and we failed miserably. It says in the help file that you can do it with one network interface Now, can't card. you just go back? It says, which one do you want to get on the LAN with? You specify that card. Does it then take it out of the running? Yes. So you can't say pick yeah. the same card. And we went around and around and around with this, Alan. You know what? I can't figure out how to do it. I have been told by people that they are able to do it. So I guess what we're going to do is ask the audience if there's anybody who has... Now, it works with a modem and a NIC, right? But then why and would you do that? But, but, well, well, a lot got, of people doing it with a modem and a NIC. Yeah, but you've got DSL, per se. But, right, but somebody who has a cable modem or DSL is going to want to work with a NIC and a NIC. Or, right. you know, and by the way, you do this all the time with Linux or any other... Here's, you know, here's how a... Uh, got a pen. Here's no. how a uh, internet connection... I'll do it with my finger. Okay. <laughs> Here, I'm throw sorry. me a pen. Thanks, Dad. Nice catch. Thank you, Thank you Dad. Wow. I only play. She can operate the camera and talk. And talk. She's, she's got a good arm. So here's the theory. You've got the Internet out here, right? You've got your computer here, your computer system here. Normally what you'd do is you'd have the Internet coming into the computer system. That's the input into one network interface card. And the second network interface card would feed right. the network. But really the truth is both network cards can feed the network. All you have to do is this. You have to make sure that the IP address on the subnet Mm -hmm. is all pointing to this computer, and this is the only one that's pointing to the outside world that uses this gateway. Okay. Now, so, I have a question. So, in theory, uh, mm -hmm. boy, you really can't see that, can you? I, don't, I can't see that, but if I've only got one <laughs> NIC, as I point to this blank see. paper. Can you see can it? You see it? All right. If I've only got one NIC in here, though, how am I going to get the connection to this machine? If I've only got one NIC here, how am I going to get Because you're going into a hub, and the point is oh, that... Oh, well, a hub. Okay, the, the point that is that you've got, this, you've got this kind of circle here, mm -hmm. which has one connection to the outside right. world. Now, the re that's why I mentioned that the other networks, the gateway mm -hmm. has to be the IP address of the gateway computer, your computer with the real IP address. Right. That's the gateway. And then this one's gateway is the outside, is the uh, Internet Service Provider's gateway. Okay. That's how the, the traffic is distinguished, right? Right. This is then the gateway for this one. Right. Sure. So some traffic is going to this and some traffic is going to this. So you have so, to have a hub between them, but we still haven't figured out how to do it with only one NIC. Well, I, like I said, you can do it with any normal proxy server. Mm -hmm. Analog X's proxy will do it, and maybe that's the best solution, Alan, is just to get Analog X's proxy, which is free mm -hmm. and is available from AnalogX.com. And a little mini hub. And, well, well you're going to get a hub anyway, hub. probably. I mean, you're going to have a hub anyway that the second nickel plug into. Yeah. Unless you only have one other machine, you're going to have a hub. So a hub's, and if, so a hub's not a big deal. How many machines do you have, Alan? Well, right now it's two, but I want to add a third one. Yeah, so you're going to have to get a hub so anyway. Have have hub. Yeah. So uh, uh, Analog X's will do it. If you use Linux, for instance, it would do it. Every, every proxy server I've ever seen will work with a single network interface card that's shared between both the Internet access and, and even and the uh, subnet. And even Microsoft, in their documentation, says it will work with one NIC. But the installer doesn't seem, nobody told the 
installer. Uh. So our problem is your problem, Alan. We've never been able to get it to do it. always says, what's the second nick? It's kind of like, what's the frequency, Kenneth? And it keeps hitting on you until you say, okay, I'm going to put in the second nick. And that's how we got it working is we ended up putting in a second uh, car. Leo, who's Kenneth? You know, when that, never mind. Push the button, Frank. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, Alan. What's the frequency, Kenneth? You're probably too young to remember that. I think I You remember that? Oh. Some guy, some, eh, I don't even want to talk about it. I'm so sorry, y'all. So. <laughs> I have no idea what he's talking about. But the point Dan is. Dan Rather, a guy jumped out of a car and started hitting on Dan Rather. This was about 15 years ago. and said, what's the frequency, Kenneth? You don't remember that? No. Wow. That I, must have been I very don't upsetting think I made that up. Rather. It was. Okay, then. Because <laughs> his well. name's not Kenneth. <laughs> So, Alan, there's our answer in its, uh, Alan, in its depressing severity. We're turning if, it to the third geek. Yeah, now. there may be somebody out there who's figured out a way to get around that stupid installer, because that's the problem, okay? Okay, great. Good and uh, if you know, folks, email us, call us, get in the chat room and tell us. Put we on have the chat, message board. Put on the message board. It's always great. But we have chat room moderators in there. If you can get in the chat room, tell them, hey, I know. Go, raise your hand. Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Cotter. Mr. Cotter. Oh, okay. We'll put you on TV. Okay, Alan. Thanks, Fantastic. Alan. So, we're working on it. All right. All right. Okay. Well, we'll get all of our... This is the most pathetic illustration. It looks like a fried egg. Well, it does now. It looks like a fried egg with a broken yolk that's leaked off the side of the plate and gotten your bacon all runny. But, mm, but before that, it looked like Sunday. Did you say bacon? After the break, more of your calls. Love but bacon. first, we're going to have our list of weekly top downloads. Mm. When the screensavers compute... No, ham. Not bacon. Ham. ZDNet Software Library is presenting this week's top downloads. Just for variety, folks, number five, win zip, 32-bit version. Number four spot, use your scanner or printer like a photocopier with the originally titled photocopier. <laughs> In the third place, ICQ, the 32-bit version, holding steady as the runner-up, the ever-popular Paint Shop Pro. And, you know, we love it so much, but are we over it yet? Godzilla, the number one top download. Godzilla, Godzilla, Godzilla go, 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 Godzilla. Go, go, download go, any of these go. programs from the ZuniNet Software Library at HotFiles.com. Hot Godzilla, we make fun of it, really is a great program. Everybody should have that Yes, program. you should. You should so. be able to pause, resume your, resume your downloads, pick yeah. where it's going. We love Godzilla. I use it all the time. It's just that, you know. We're tired of it being number one, though. Would you yeah. please download something else? Just download something else. Keith joins us on the phone from Evansville, Indiana. Hello, Keith. Hello, Keith. Hey, Kate and Leo. How are you doing? We're Couldn't be better. Right. Wonderful. What's the frequency, Leo? <laughs> She's going to start beating on me. You remember that. I'm not dreaming that, am I? I don't have a clue what no. you're talking I am. about. I, maybe Leo. I did dream it. Maybe I'm sorry. I did dream it. sorry. So, Keith, what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the question, Kate? Uh, I'm wondering which streaming format, Windows Media Player or Real Player, will produce the best end product? Well, That's a great, great question. question. Now, there was a big write-up on this in PC Magazine comparing codecs. That's between right. Between QuickTime, Real, and Windows Media Player, and Windows Media won. They picked Windows really? Media Player. Yes. And they do a ju what they did was juried... Uh, listening. So that means it's not just technical uh, specs, but they actually had people sit down, people, real people, mm -hmm. musicians, a, a broad variety, sit down and listen, and they said, we hear the media player sounds better. Now, I should tell you, and we talked to them about this, they were not streaming it off the Internet. They were getting it from a hard drive. So what they were listening oh. to was, well, but that's well. the pure encoding without any Internet mess-ups in there. But that means so, it's working really well with Windows, though, because it's the Windows Media Player. Well, but what, it, what it's telling you is that the codec is mm -hmm. the cleanest, okay? Okay. Now, it doesn't tell you how well it handles Internet burps. Mm -hmm. So maybe real is better at that. I haven't okay, found that real, to be the case. Net congestion. If it's on my hard drive, I get a net yeah. congestion buffering error. That's so. right. So, so and, and frankly, I think QuickTime is better uh, yeah. myself. But uh, that's my ears, and you know you probably should go with you know these, this expert jury because uh, presumably they they were more balanced. Um, and you didn't offer me QuickTime as a choice, so no, I wasn't really looking at QuickTime. Yeah. Quick Why not? Oh, I don't know. I just uh, I got into the real stuff, and I've been experimenting with it at work, and uh, we're going to be using it uh, some streaming video pretty soon. And this is on your business website. Yeah, I work at a university, and we're going to be streaming classes. Well, the other issue is, and this is a very, I think, an important issue, particularly for a university, is Windows Media Player only works on Windows. 
Whereas uh -huh. Real will work on Macintosh, Linux, and Windows. Oh, that's a good, okay. good point. And I think it's very important in your environment, and, and any business should be aware of this, not to be plat, you know, be platform agnostic, not to be supporting just one platform. Right. But in a university, especially, I, tell, I can tell you right now, you get some kids come in there where their Macintoshes can't listen to it, they're going to be upset. Oh, definitely. Yep. So, and rightly so. Now, the only advantage that QuickTime has uh, that is an absolute concrete advantage is it's using this new Akamai technology to spread the bandwidth out. That's probably not an issue for you because I imagine all your streams are going to be listened to locally, geographically near you, right? Uh, not necessarily. We're going more into distance education, okay. so okay. The, it could be, you know, cross country. Well, that might be relevant. What they mm -hmm. have done, and I think this is brilliant, more and more websites are doing this. Akamai is a server company that puts basically relay servers all over the country. So the first time you get a QuickTime stream, it goes out, it gets it from the master server, and the master server will then stream it down to a, the nearest Akamai server, where it will be cached. You'll still be getting it from the master site, but the next time you go in there or the next time somebody else goes in there, they'll get it from the local cached server. Oh. And as you know, streaming media, anything that's coming over the Internet, works better when it's geographically closer. Fewer sure. hops means a better quality signal. So Akamai is really optimized for that, and that, that does make a difference in that buffering thing that you're mm -hmm. complaining about. QuickTime will still do that, but doesn't do it nearly as badly. That's more on demand. That's fascinating. So that if you're coming from a particular area, it says, well, I need to stream locally there. So That's that right. There. And there are servers geographically everywhere. And QuickTime's cross-platform. Yeah, I, you do I really... Uh, that's a good question. I can't remember if there's... A, yes, there is a QuickTime player. I don't know if it is for audio, however. That's a good question. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think really uh, as a commercial website, you're, or not a commercial website, but as a, as a website that is public, you're probably going to want to use the most supported platform. And right now that's real networks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Qual yeah. I'll tell you the truth. The quality between all three of them it's not that much difference. Sure. Okay. Well, great. There's some thoughts. What university? Uh, the University of Southern Indiana. That's oh, great. All right. Yeah, and right here in Evansville. You know that school, David, yeah? He's from Indiana. He's like, I got no kicked idea. out of there. <laughs> He's been kicked, but, that's, but you know what? Yeah. That's no badge of honor. He's been kicked out of Maybe I can get him back in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's great. And you're going to start doing classes uh, online. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a distance uh, education coordinator, and Excellent. we're going to be wow. streaming across the country. And Only audio, not video, too? No, we're going to be doing both audio and video. Oh, oh that's terrific. Yeah. That's very exciting. Oh, that's we're going to be doing archived and uh, live broadcasts. Keith, when you get that up, please let us know about it. I'd love to take a look and uh, maybe plug it on the air. Hey, that sounds great. All right, great and idea. crash all your hey, servers. can I get an autographed picture of both of you two? If you'll hang it over the server. Oh, yeah, I'll put you right up there. Okay, Alrighty. Keith, hang on the line. Thanks a lot, Leo. We'll get Keith. your address. Sure Alrighty. enough, Keith. Take care. Coming up next, get ready. You never know what happens when we open the phone lines and net cam channels to more of your live calls and tough computer questions. We're going to find out how to lock down your control panels and more with the screen savers. Continue. 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 Thank you. Continue. 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 What's the frequency? Screensavers.com, the best place for more information about what's on this show. Now, whether it's building your own ultimate gaming machine, as we just did a few days ago, or just making a little music with your PC, click on Show and Tell. And remember, it's all at the Screensavers.com. Making a little music with your PC like we do every day. Every day. Let's talk to Bill. Please, Bill. Oh, yeah. Please, Bill, joining us on the ZDTV3 Com Netcam. Oh, you know anybody who does that? Oh. Only you, dude. Okay. Hi, Bill. Toronto, oh, Ontario, oh. Canada. Hello, oh. Bill. Yes, Canada calling, yes. <laughs> hey, so they finally worked out the whole, like, toll-free Canadians thing? I guess so. The Internet, yeah. I guess they worked it out with that. Okay. They got the Internet. <laughs> hey, we had, we this had... is so exciting. What? He's got one of those new web pad devices hanging on the wall behind him. Oh. <laughs> you can surf the internet with that and that everything. That's right. It's one of those uh, new magneto uh, particle uh, web chats. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do for you, Bill? Okay, I've got uh, three computers, yeah. and I've got a, a cable connection and a DSL connection. Okay. And I want to use one. Well, in the past, I've been using my DSL connection through one main computer that has a, has a firewall and a NAT for one other terminal. Right. Okay. But now I've got two internet connections, the cable and the DSL. Why do you have two? Why, why, why? Why, I don't know. Because my upstream bandwidth wasn't high enough on my DSL. Oh, so. Got it. 
So you, well, um, why don't you just get rid of the DSL and just keep the cable? Well, I don't know. It's kind of nice having both set up a Quake <laughs> server on one and then, you know, <laughs> net meeting on the other. I don't know. I'm a bandwidth hog. I'm sorry. You're my kind of guy, Bill. Bill. You're a geek. Yay. Yeah, Yay, yeah, Bill. Yeah, <laughs> Roger Clapp for Bill. Okay, so check it out. So, so I, want to take, I want to use the one computer as a firewall and the NAT for both connections. Can it be done? Not that I know of. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. We, well, were, we were trying to figure that out. but The problem is, uh, is you've got two distinct streams coming in, right? Right. And they're not related. If you were doing bonding of some kind, so that what would happen is, and this is, this, uh, many uh, operating systems will do this. They'll say, okay, you, I want this packet, you, I want this packet, you know, come, both come back to me, which yeah. doubles your effective bandwidth. But uh, that's not it. But you're not going to, I don't think you can do bonding without the cooperation of the ISP. And I think having two different separate sources isn't going to work. You have two work. gateways, you've got two IP addresses, you have two. So you, uh, okay. if you had separate NICs. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they are separate NICs. Okay. But, uh, basically, I just want. And well, there's separate sub a firewall, you know, to kind of they're block separate off some sub of the ports. There's separate subnets as well, so they're going off to different computers? To different computers, oh, yeah. Can you just put a firewall on each? Just put one on the cable modem box and one on the DSL box. You mean just a software firewall? No, you can totally connection? do this. I, I misunderstood. I thought you wanted to combine the data from the two oh, different no, sources. No, no, no. I don't want to bond it. I just want to actually just block it out and uh, filter yeah, yeah. it. And I, just, just I don't want people to attack my network. Right. It's know? just separate processes. You're using IP chains for the NAT? Uh, no, I'm using actually Windows 2000 uh, internet sharing. Oh. oh. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> if you were using Linux, like... it would be simple because basically you would have two different processes running, one on Ethernet 0, one on Ethernet 1. Right. And, and because it's a multitasking operating system, no problem. Uh, they each have their own kind of discrete channels, and I'm pretty sure you could do that. How, I, don't, I don't know how you would do it on uh, Win2K because uh, I don't know if the Internet Connect, by the way, has great Internet connection sharing capabilities, mm -hmm. really easy to use, um, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it has the capability of saying, okay, this process, this, run two, basically because you want to run two copies of the same program, right? Pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, you know, it's really up to the program whether the program will allow you to create two separate instances with, with private data in both yeah. and, pri you know, pri and different settings for both because one has to be set to Ethernet mm -hmm. 0 and one has to be set to Ethernet 1. Right. So that's what you need to investigate. In mm -hmm. theory, what you want to do is, is absolutely doable. But you have to have a program that allow you to have two separate instances with absolutely discrete data in both and, and different settings for both, obviously, so it can have different uh, IP addresses and different... Now, I, and I suspect... Right. Knowing how Microsoft designs Windows, it's unlikely that that's there. Windows is, unlike Linux, Linux is really designed to be a multi-user, multi-process operating system. I mean, that's really mm -hmm. its fundamental core and heart and history. Whereas Windows has always been, even Windows 2000, designed to be one computer, one user, one operating system. Right. So huh. that's the, I guess what I would say is the problem is to figure out how to do that with that software. Right. It looks like I'm going to have to take my old 486 and uh, make another firewall. Make yeah, a NAT box. You know what? not that. Do that. Yeah. Oh. oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's, is that your mom again? It's again? not your mother. Yeah, say hi to Froggy. Is it your mom? No, no, that's, that's my crazy roommate. Oh, <laughs> that's good. It's cool. Yeah, okay, Froggy. We had, a, we, right. had a, <laughs> we had another person with a frog, and it turned out it to be his monkey. mother. It was a monkey, and it was his, his mother. mother. Oh, we've got a whole set of characters here. Maybe next time I call, we'll have someone else. Is that, oh, is that an extra sketch behind you? Is that what that, that is? Uh, no, it's a, what is that, a magma doodle? It's a magma doodle. Magna doodle. Yeah. Oh, my kids So love can you that. have him just come out and go, screensavers.com, oh, because frogs can't run. Can't erase it. Yay. Great. I love it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for the call, Bill. There's the answer. It's not much of one. Uh, if somebody can uh, give give us a, a way of doing that with Windows 2000 and their connection sharing software, we'd love to hear about it. Okay? Thank you. That's the problem, anyway. Yeah, you know, it's so easy to do with Linux. I would just do it in Linux. Yeah, yeah just do it one Linux Folks, software. Don't stop flipping. Still to come on this very show. Oh, she did it again. Gosh, I wish you'd, if the camera had just moved a little faster, you would have seen her. We'll look at the new iPad from Compaq. It doesn't have an ISA or a PCI slot. How does it work? Also, more of your tough questions and hopefully a few clever computing solutions. We're not doing so good yet. <laughs> and a pair of gaming glasses that will have you seeing triple. Three gym ladder backs? It's possible as the screensavers roll on. Hey, I'm Leo Laporta. Thank you so much for joining us today in the chat room. Are you confused by Microsoft's operating system? 
Oh, I'm sorry. Operating system strategy. That's we'll put that in quotes. <laughs> strategy. Strategy. Let's see. We did DOS. That was fine. Then we did Windows 95. That was cool. Came out in 95. Yeah. Right. Then we did right. Windows 98. Yeah. yeah. That made sense. Came yeah. out in 99. No, didn't. Yeah. No, 98 came out in 98. But then 98 SE came out in 99. All oh, right. There you go. And why they didn't name it? Right. And then we got then we got Windows 2000, which actually is not the next step in the oh, Windows family. No, no. It's not the upgrade from 98. No, it's, it's the, upgrade the upgrade from NT4. Right. So then, what the heck is supposed to come after 98 SE? <sighs> Windows Me. Me. Windows Me, Millennium this is Microsoft's announcing Edition. this today. They oh. announced it. They're going to call it Millennium Edition. Gag. Windows Millennium Edition. I'm sorry. We've known that for a while. We did, well, we knew about Millennium. We were all calling it Millennium. Turns out they're going to call it Millennium Edition so that they can call it Windows Me. Me, huh? Windows Me. If they make their slogan Amaze Yourself, I'm assuming. I'm going to be mad. Yeah. I'm going to be really mad. I'm going to be mad. All right. So we think it's confusing. We think that uh, when 2000 comes out, a lot of consumers are going to upgrade to 2000 from mm -hmm. 98, thinking that's the logical upgrade. It's not. Uh, I think it's a good upgrade, but I think for a lot of people it's not a good choice. Not so consumers, no. Here's your chance to tell us what you think. And we're just going to take this moment to thank the Macintosh for giving things nice orderly numbers. Yeah, you know what? And the Apple has even said, which is wonderful, we're not going to do the Microsoft dual path. We're going to have one operating system. Now, that's leaving some people in the cold. That's the downside of that, is older Macs won't be able to do it. Won't be able to run OS X at all. But you have a big G3 to run I think OS it's X. smart, because you know what, you know, if you have a Mac, this is the operating system I use. Yep. So, thanks, guys. Anyway. Screensavers.com is where the poll is hanging out. Click on the talkback feature and tell us what do you think would be a better name for Windows Me? And also, what would you name Windows CE, which was lame anyway, to Windows Powered, which remains lame? Come up with some better names. Call us. Windows Powered. I love that. What's that? What's, what's that? What's that? Uh, Davis joins oh. us on the ZDTV 3 Come Net Cam Network from Santa Monica, California. Hello, Hi, Davis. Hi, Davis. Hey, Kate. Hey, Leo. How are you? Leo, you're in trouble. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You it's Davis Darvish. My site here, Leoville. Well, wait a minute. Well, let's check time. that. What? What? Let's what? check that. Davis, uh, what Davis. site is that that you run? Uh, it's the ZDTV Fanit website. Frank, I, and a bunch of other people. Richard. Well, let's Jim. just go to yeah. my no. site, Leoville.com, and let's just see if I have a link to the ZDTV. The Davis Darvish's ZDTV Fanit site. What's you mean that, that link, Davis? Davis? You mean that link? I just put it there yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I guess so. Okay, I you really you while you're on the air now? No, I did it yesterday. You just didn't notice. Oh, okay. Okay. He's, he was our v mailer a couple you of days You know what? As long ago. as I'm here, can I just show him something else? Davis, do you mind if I show you one? And well, then we'll get to your question. Sure. I put a new page off the pictures page with all of the autographed photos oh we goodness. have ever gone Look, out it's and like signed. The Hunky Leo Gallery. The, it, okay. Well, there, you're in there. This is the, the Hunky Kate Gallery. You, <laughs> look at that picture. I should be in there, too. Whoa. All so right. this is, Yeah, we'll put an autographed picture of Davis Darvish up there. I'm sure it'll be very popular. <laughs> yeah. So what can we do for you? Okay. Um, well, I got my cool. at-home cable modem and for a while ago, and, and that's what I'm calling you on now. Yeah. But, uh... Trying to get it work with Linux is a pain, and I just want to know kind of like if you can give me a step-by-step -step type of instruction on how to kind of set it up so it would start working under Linux. Well, I'm not going to uh, give you the step-by-step because -step I don't want people to fall asleep during this program. Okay. okay. However, I will explain to you the concept. It's not that difficult. Uh, gonna, we're not going to go over there because Linux is not running I was over there. I say I'll go mm -hmm. with boot. Well, if you want to. Well, it, but... I don't think we're getting into Linux on that one. Uh, okay. I think that's a Windows machine now. Oh yeah, we we re-imaged it and killed Lilo. Thank oh, you. Oh, sorry. So. Anyway. <laughs> I can't drink it, but so in any mean. event, I don't really want to go through it step by step anyway. Yeah, okay. it's me too because I didn't fix it yet. Um, but basically, what you're going to do, you're running KDE uh, or yeah. GNOME. Which one? KDE. KDE. Okay. There is a program, a wonderful program that all Red Hat systems have called Linux Conf. There's a command line version of it and there's a X window version of it. L-I-N-U-X-C-O-N-F. So you're going to log in as root and you're going to run that, okay? Right. And you're going to go to the network interface part. You're going to make, then you're going to click on adapter tab and make sure that your Ethernet, you have one Ethernet card, right? Yeah. That's going to be called ETH0. That's the name of that device, okay? So you'll click on the adapter and you'll set up Ethernet Zero for your IP address, for your mask, and that kind of thing. In that same Linux conf, if you browse around a little bit, there'll also be a setup for name servers. You'll mm -hmm. set those up, and then you'll close Linux conf. It'll say you want to activate these changes. You say yes, and that's all you need to do. You don't it have should to work. Specify the frame type or no, because you're on a LAN. 
okay? Because you have a cable modem, you're on a LAN, it's the same way you'd set up a LAN. Mm -hmm. The frame type, the default frame type works just fine okay. because it's standard Ethernet. Uh, the, the, you know, you don't need to have any dial-up settings or anything like that. So Davis, it's just like putting yourself on a network. If I had Linux running, I could show you, but, you, but honestly, now that you know that, you're going to find it very easy to do. Use Linux Conf to okay, do it. Okay, so maybe it's just not detecting my Ethernet card properly or something. Well, if it doesn't oh. see the card on boot up and watch during boot up, make sure it sees your card, then that means you have the wrong card type entered in there. Linux Conf can save you there, too. Same place, the networking settings. Mm -hmm. You have an option to choose what card you're using. What card are you using? It's an Intel Ether... Link Express 10 megabit. All right, wow. so you, now that weird. should be no, that should be supported, but you might you might have to have a module for it. So. Yeah, my friends have the three comms down the block. I might ask them to tell them like it's defective or something, come replace it. I know those work. Yeah, the three comms work great. Three comms. I'll tell you what, I will put a how-to in the show notes on the Intel card for you. I'll show you where to go and what you need to do to make okay. that work. Okay. okay? But okay. Davis, I'll give you a hint. You know, Kate, who doesn't really do Linux, we know this, I actually ran Linux Con and I set up that machine That's right, you network, did. My very own yep. stuff. So, honey, if I can do it, you can <laughs> totally do it's it. It's totally doable. All sure. right? Thanks, Davis. Now, will you please take us to break, man? Um, no. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're going to say oh, no? Don't I'm taking that link off my you know site right now. <laughs> you beat that punk up. It might be the first person that ever said no to you. So, <laughs> That's you know, right. Why not? Somebody's got to be. Go for it. <laughs> Thanks, Kate and Leo. Put on your 3D glasses and start gaming as the screensavers rolls on. What a beautiful job. Thanks, you guys. Very Thank good. You. Take care. Davis, you rock, man. Screensavers.com. You know what that is, don't you? What? It's the best place for more information about what's on the show. All right. Take this week's Super Geek Challenge. It's stalking the elusive BIOS. Bag that BIOS, baby, with ten intensive study questions. It's always blast. Woohoo! Screensavers.com. Congratulations to Matthew. See, I did like you did. You did. From Matthew from Seattle, Washington. The winner hey, of yesterday's Matthew. Super Geek Quiz T-shirt or cap giveaway. We've been working together too long, Kate. I'm starting to talk like you. That's really sad. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right. Congratulations. You're going to be a really big dork by the time I'm done with you. Now make sure <laughs> Too late. that you fill out the... Ooh. Fill out the form after you've yeah, taken the quiz for your chance to win. And now, as promised, here is Jim Ladderback with a look at a new pair of 3D glasses that works on your existing games on today's Fresh Gear. <laughs> These are the 3D Revelator glasses from Elsa, and what they do is actually kind of cool. They add real three-dimensional effects to computer games you already have, the first-person and the third-person shooters like Half-Life or Tomb Raider and things like that. Now, the way they work is they take an existing game and they break it up and they send different images to each eye based on what's called the Z-buffer, which is what adds depth to those games. And the way it works is the glasses themselves have two different, uh, two different lenses here, and they work with this. This is an infrared controller, and this controller tells each of these lenses when to black out and when to open up. Now, it refreshes 100 to 150 times a second, so you don't get a lot of the flicker that we're seeing in some of the older versions. I'm going to put these on and show you exactly what happens. This is Tomb Raider right here, and it's running in sort of the non-affected mode, the non-revelator mode. I'm going to hit a key. When I hit the key, you'll see the image split. Now, the image is split into two, and you can see there's two Laura Crofts and two backgrounds. But I can't see the split. What I see is a three-dimensional image so that when I move my head like this, the image moves to the right. When I move like this, it moves to the left. It really does give a lot of depth to the game. It really does make it look 3D. It's an interesting effect. A couple of problems with it, though. First of all, it makes the games a lot more dim because it breaks the two into one. Which means you've got to turn the brightness up on your games. And games that are already a little bit dark to begin with are going to be really dark. But uh, overall, these are actually an interesting innovation. If you like to play games, these 3D or first-person shooter games, and you're getting a little bit bored with what you have, the glasses themselves only cost $100 for the infrared version, or you can get a wired version for $70. Now, a couple limitations. Elsa says they work best with their cards, built on the Rivet TNT2, TNT2 Ultra, or TNT, or even the new GE Force 256, but it will work with other cards built on that same chipset. It's an interesting product. It's definitely not for everybody, and uh, you may find after using it for a little while that uh, you really don't want to wear it. The glasses aren't that heavy, which is nice. They're actually pretty light and comfortable to wear. It does cost $100. I'm going to give it two out of five stars, and it is available now.
Steve Jim, watch Pick New Raider. Catch a new fresh gear Friday afternoon at 1.30, 12.30 Central right here on ZDTV. Something I don't know about. Read an email. Read an email. He's an email from Daniel. He uh -huh. asks, what do you think of the new legacy-free eye pack from Compaq with the ISA and PCI spots eliminated? Is it going to be more reliable? Does legacy-free mean reliability? We'll find out when the screen savers continue. Email from Daniel who says, "What do you think of the new Legacy Free Eye Pack from Compaq? It's very pretty. Sure. No slots. Is it going to be more reliable?" That's such an interesting. The Eye Pack. Now I'd love to show you an Eye Pack right now, but the only, we couldn't even get the wooden mock-up. Let's take a look at this machine from Compaq. It just started Convex. shipping last week. Now this is Jim Louderback showing us this machine at Compaq. Isn't it pretty? Now it's Legacy Free. That means inside it doesn't have an ISA slot, it doesn't have legacy ports, it doesn't have PS2, it doesn't have a, a I'll lot. I'll tell you something else I noticed. It didn't have a floppy drive or a CD drive. What kind of computer is no, that? No, what it actually has, well, I'll tell you what kind of a computer it is. It's not really intended for consumers, oh. this particular machine. Now, let's it explain. For? It's, it's a corporate use. Now, oh. Say you're an IT department and you have to buy like 200 computers and you want to be able to control everything that gets installed on those machines. Well, you can do that. Some people, <clears throat> some people <clears throat> like to install all kinds of weird stuff <clears throat> on their machines, <laughs> and IT departments just don't know what to I do with do it. it. So what they do is they give you something like the iPad, which again is a very small, streamlined machine. There are extra things that they call what was multi-base, where you can hot plug an LS120 drive, an extra hard drive, extra storage, but you still have really limited install places and very little that you can do. So what it's meant is to be a small machine that sits on the desktop, has a very small footprint, is very reliable, but it's also meant to connect to Compaq's portal that's going to roll out at the same time that's meant as a corporate portal, and also for companies that like to run their applications off the server, which many of them do, so that you don't actually have to install a full licensed copy on the hard drive. They run that main copy off the server, and then you get a shortcut to it on your hard drive. So that's what it's for. Now, of course, anytime you, you reduce the noise and the chatter going inside between the components, you're going to make things more reliable. You're going to speed them up. But I I still wouldn't say that it would be the be-all, end-all of reliability. And again, that convenience is really meant for your IT department right. and not for you. Now, it comes loaded with Windows 2000, which is great. But again, it's intended for the corporate environment. It's not really, if you're a gamer, you're going to be totally out of luck, I think, with this machine. And you'll probably, in the long run, just be better off. You want a consumer machine? Get an e-machine. It's 500 bucks for the Celeron 500 version running on a 66 megahertz bus. And it's 800 bucks for a P3 500 on a 100 megahertz bus. Great price, but for all the limitations you're going to have, again, it's not really for you. It's for work. All right, let's move on to Todd on the phone from Osage Beach, Missouri. Is that how you say it, Osage? Osage? Osage Beach. Osage All right. Beach. Hi, how you doing, I Todd? I would have been afraid to be like, Osage Beach. Osage. Osage Beach. Osage Beach, Missouri sun. What can we do for you, Todd? Well, I set up a computer for my son. Good man. And uh, I want to keep him from messing with the items in the control panel and the network setting. You bet. I don't blame you. There's yeah. a way to do that. Yeah, what operating system are you running? Windows 98. Now, I'll tell you, normally, right off the top of my head, I'd say, oh, in NT, all you have to do is just set up user privileges based on who logs in. Ironically, that's Mac. exactly what we're going to do on the PC. On How the Windows are we going to do that, Leo? Because uh, even though it's probably not installed on your computer, there is a policy editor which you can install. And it's exactly for that environment, for the network environment, the business environment, where you don't want people messing with those settings. settings but it works great for kids. Here's how you're going to install it, Todd, okay? You go to your Windows Setup tab in the Add Remove Programs Control Panel. And I'm going to show you how to use a button I've never used before. Ooh. I kind of Norm thought he was kidding that no. he never clicked this well, button. No. Well, why would you ever click this button? Normally, everything you need that's in the Windows install is in these checkboxes up here. I never even noticed this, but there's a Have Disk button, and this is so that you can install other Windows components that are on another disk. In this case, you're going to browse over to your CD, your Windows CD. And we actually have it on a hard drive, but it'll look just like this. You're going to go to the Tools folder. The Red kit. Isn't it the resource kit? Yeah, it's in the res yeah, kit. Yeah, the res kit folder and then the network administration folder, netadmin, and you're going to see Paul edit, okay? Policy this is the policy editor. editor. You're going to install that from that, and I would install 
a group and system policy editor, just take it all, installs very quickly. Once you've got it installed, it doesn't have to take a restart, you're going to be able to run the policy editor by simply going to the start menu, run, and type P-O-L-E-D-I-T, Paul Edit. Okay. There's the policy editor. We're going to create a new policy for the default user. Oh, look at this. And this is all the stuff you can turn off, including, you see here, the control panel, network, restrict network control panel, check. Oh, Display look at Display control, that. restrict, check. So, ta -da. You, ta da passwords, check. Printers, check. Yeah, turn it all off. And you can see, you can hide general and details pages, disable deletion of printers. It has a lot of additional settings. Hide background page, hide screensaver page. So you can restrict individual portions or the entire control panel. Uh, it very, it's very effective. It won't get rid of all control panels, but the ones you're talking about, you really don't want your kid messing with. It will, it will allow you to change. Now he can do that on an on a per user basis. Per this user. Says default. Well, I made a default user, which means because I don't have multiple users in this machine, it's the whole machine. Okay? So maybe you should make it like that and then make Dad's login be the one that has well, all of Well, that's what stuff. I would... Precisely, because otherwise how are you going to be able to get back in? Right, because otherwise your kid is going to reboot and go, all I have to do is be Dad, so use right. a different password. Right, create a new password and uh, right. have an administrator. and You can even have him be uh, unable to change the wallpaper, the color scheme. You can restrict you can registry be a big editing no tools. You monster is what we're telling you. You could say, no. Disable the DOS prompt. That's Look at all he hears anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Many people don't realize this capability exists. Uh, I had never really played with it until uh, uh, we, okay. s we heard just now that you were going to ask this question. So I went out and I tried playing with it. And, in fact, this will do what you want to do. Now, does 95 have a policy editor? Same thing. The same thing. Exactly the same process Ruby. of installing it, okay? And you will go out and you will add remove programs. Click on the Windows Setup tab. You'll go to your Windows disk and you'll find, again, the policy editor in the NetAdmin tools in the Res Kit. Uh, tool folder okay. in the tools folder, okay? For those of you running awesome. NT, I think you can do it without having to install anything extra. Because NT has an administrator the whole point. already installed. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Can Good I get look. a picture? Sure. Oh, but of course. Make it your desktop. That'll really drive your kid crazy. <laughs> oh, great. <I'm> <laughs> Thanks for the call, Todd. Thank you. How, how old's your son? He's 16 months. Well, I don't think oh, you have to worry yet. <laughs> oh, he's playing with it. Oh, that's oh, so cute. Oh, that's great. Hide the keyboard, Dad. Just I'll just... email you a picture of him playing with it. Oh, okay. would you send us that? I'd love it. What's his I name? Will. Huh? What's his name? Cody. Hi, Cody. Hey, Cody. Like Does he, he watch the show? But... Yeah, he's out in the living room watching. Oh, Hi, that's Cody. great. And, and his mom out there, too? Yes, she is. What's her name? Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Cindy. We've got to give Cindy some credit. She did all the work. Hello. No kidding. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Thanks, Take Todd. Care. Take care. Todd's doing all the work now, though. All right. Ted John, that's you. Scroll up. Stand up straight. You are so ordered to record a video email and send it to us. Instructions and your scripts are waiting at the screensavers.com. Just click on Interact. And if you don't believe me, listen here. Staff Sergeant Michael Cook. Sergeant, take a... Yes, ma'am. Good evening from Fort Riley, Kansas. Staff Sergeant Michael Cook. You're enjoying the screensavers with Kate Patel and Leo Laporte. Improve your computing skills after the break. CDTV, amaze yourself. Howdy folks, welcome back to the screensavers. If you take a peek up there on your screen, you'll see so far it's pretty evenly divided between yes and what strategy. You confused by Microsoft strategy? What, what strategy? Got 24 hours to be confused at thescreensavers.com. Folks, before we read an email, I'd like to take a moment and walk over to this computer for one sec. Y'all know this is coming. And just simplify yesterday's Windows tip like even more. Can I just show you? Grab the folder, pull it over here, and it's a toolbar. Thank you very much. You're done. Okay. <laughs> that does make it a little easier. Isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> Brian uh, sends us a note. Sorry to say the information you presented today about, or actually this was yesterday's show, NGIO. What did yeah. that stand for? Next Generation Next Generation I.O. The future I.O. is out of date. The two competing standards join forces to form InfiniBand yeah. before the end of last year. InfiniBand is supposed to embrace the best of both NGIO and future I.O. And that's got all these people in here. Contact However, LHP, yep. our advice is still the same, which is wait till the standard comes out in their cards for it. We've actually then agreed. you can think about it. And really the question is about PCIX, and that was what we were saying is this looks like the better bet NGIO or now InfiniBand. Yep. So we'll put still this stands. in the show notes though because it'll show you all of the people that are involved with yeah, it. Yeah, we'll put a link to InfiniBand data. Big fat link. That's it for this edition of the Screensavers. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm Kate Patello. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Screensavers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Love your hair. Three stairs today. Here we go.